putting powerful thoughts in tiny packages. We have learned about two important elements of poetry. Can you remember what they are? Yes, you've used your poet's eyes to see the world in fresh ways and... You've learned that line breaks are one way to give poems music. Today, I want to teach you about something else that poets consider when they want to write a poem. And this is even before they think about how to describe something or how to position words on the page. And this is a biggie. Poets choose topics that matter to them. You've been writing about little treasures and other interesting objects. Poets do often write about shells and pine cones and e even safety pins. But in real life, poets aren't told, here's a pine cone, write a poem about it. Instead, a poet, like every other kind of writer, needs to start by thinking, hmm, what matters to me? Today, I'm going to teach you that poets think about a big idea, a big feeling, and then find the small moment, image, or object that holds that big feeling, that big idea. To write a good poem, I need a topic that is big. At least, it needs to feel big to me, a topic that fills my heart. When I have my big, strong idea or feeling, I then think about a small moment that gives me that feeling. Right now, I want to show you how I can start with something big, like being safe at home. I could write a zillion poems and stories about my home, but I need to zoom in on one small thing, a moment or an object or image that can hold my feelings of admiration. And then I need to see that small thing with poet's eyes. I am thinking about last week when we did show and tell and Olivia asked Allison and I, are you going to share something also? It surprised me because I wasn't planning on sharing and it warmed my heart because no one else thought about Allison and I in that way. I decided to share my Monstera Deliciosa, also known as the Swiss cheese plant. And I chose it because every day I watch it grow right before my eyes. I think I am ready to write a poem because I have a topic and a big feeling. How much hope my plant gives me. I have something small and specific. I am ready to write. Second grade friends, remember strategies that poets use to write poems. All right, number one, poets find a big topic that gives them a big feeling. Number two, poets find a small moment, detail, or object that holds the big feeling. Number three, poets look with poets' eyes and see this ordinary thing in a new way. And number four, poets write about it experimenting with line breaks. Here is one last example. Jane Yolen, the author of Owl Moon, wrote a haiku about when her daughter went looking for owls with her father in their backyard. Owl Moon Haiku by Jane Yolen. Snowy night shadows, what flies silent past the moon? Pa and I watch owls. Writers, you have so much work to do today. One thing you can do just like we did here together is to find the big topics, the big feeling in your own lives about being home. 
Then you find a small moment, detail, or object that holds that big feeling of home. You can write new poems that do all these things. You can also reread your existing poems, deciding whether you can revise them to do all of these things also. You have a treasure chest full of possible poems. So many choices. Next week, you will select one poem to be published in our PHS Mayfest poem booklet. You should have lots of poems about home to choose from. All right, second grade friends, time to start writing. <laughs>